Hey there YouTube lovers, my name is BB8 and today I am going to review The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. I really wasn't expecting a new Zelda game for a long time only because of how big Tears of the Kingdom was, but a new original Ze Zelda game came sooner than I thought. With The Legend of Zelda's first character based spin-off, if you ignore the games from the Philips CDI, of course, where you play as Princess Zelda. It's insane to think that both Nintendo princesses have had spin-off games in the same year, with Princess Peach Showtime, which I still need to play, and The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. Now, back on track, is The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom the masterpiece I was hoping for, or is it one of the franchise's worst that sh should remain stuck in the still world? I guess there's only one way to find out. So, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? And just as a quick warning before we get into the review, this review does contain spoilers. So, if you've not played The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom yet, watch this review video at your own risk because I'm not taking responsibility if, if, Echoes of Wisdom is spoiled for you. And with that being said, let's get into the review. Starting off with the gameplay. The gameplay of Echoes of Wisdom is a mix of classic and modern Zelda, but the only difference is you play as Princess Zelda instead. The combat system is different for Zelda though, because it does rely on the Echo system, which is a mechanic that allows players to use different echoes, which does add depth and creativity to the ways that you solve puzzles and defeat enemies, which does encourage creativity and experimentation among the people playing the game, which does add a fresh layer of challenge to the dungeons. The only negative thing I have to say about the Echoes mechanic in Echoes of Wisdom is how bad the menus are. I'm not gonna lie, the other menus in the game do stay true to past Zelda games, but the Echoes menu was really difficult to navigate. But what about Tears of the Kingdom? That game had a similar menu system with Zonai devices, and that game ended up with certified gold. Well, the only differences between Tears of the Kingdom and Echoes of Wisdom is Tears of the Kingdom only had 27 Zone Eye devices, so it wasn't really a huge problem in Tears of the Kingdom like it was in Echoes of Wisdom, only because Echoes of Wisdom has 127 Echoes to find and it can be a nightmare to navigate the menu at times. Before we move on to the graphics, I want to talk about the Mysterious Sword, which you obtain after fighting an evil Echo version of Link. Using it will transform Zelda into her sword fighter form, which resembles Link and allows her to use Link's moveset for a short period of time, which you only have access to the sword when the sword fighter form is unlocked, but Link's other weapons, such as his bow and arrow and his bombs, are unlocked later in the game and all three weapons can be upgraded with might crystals that you can find around Hyrule. Now moving on to the graphics and the performance, visually, The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom brings the art style of the 2019 remake of Link's Awakening over quite well. Echoes of Wisdom does do more than Link's Awakening visually, since it does more with the environments and the world building. My biggest flaw with the 2019 remake of Link's Awakening is the lack of environments within Koholint Island. Echoes of Wisdom did a better job at that, since we do get to see snowy mountains of Lanayru, the scorching volcanoes of Goron, the sandy deserts of Gerudo, and the beautiful waters of both Zora clans, which I will bring up in the characters section. There isn't just the map of Hyrule either. There is also another world to talk about, like how A Link to the Past has the Dark World, A Link Between Worlds has Low Rule, and Twilight Princess has the Twilight Realm. But what does Echoes of Wisdom have that these three games I just mentioned do? The Still World. 
is the answer to that. The still world looks exactly like the distortion world from Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, but without the gravity bending mechanics. I mean, seriously, if Grezzo can make something that looks like the distortion world for a Zelda game, why didn't Grezzo make Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl? Back on track, The Legend of Zelda doesn't disappoint me with its world building most of the time, but Echoes of Wisdom has exceptional world building not just visually, but in the characters as well, which I will talk about in a bit. Unfortunately, Echoes of Wisdom doesn't have flawless performance since the frame rate at times can be inconsistent, but isn't disruptive enough to have a severe impact on the gameplay. The reason for this is because it can run at 60 FPS at times and dip down depending on on what happens in the game. And I'm not gonna lie about the echo system here. I understand why there's a limit on how many echoes can be summoned at a time. Because the Switch isn't really a powerful console, and I do understand that unlimited echoes in the field at one time can interfere with the Switch's hardware limitations. But the performance may bother most people, but it didn't really bother me as much. The most noticeable flaw for me is the lifeless game over screen. I don't know if it's just a me thing, but the game over screen is just still and lifeless. Since there is no transition animation or anything like that. It just appears out of nowhere, which does make the game over screen feel cheap or something to come out of outright games. And I also feel like the music to come out of the game over screen could have been more menacing as heard in past Zelda games like Ocarina of Time. And at least past Zelda games had game over screen animations which did make them more interesting but Echoes of Wisdom, even though it's not a bad game, probably has one of the worst game over screens in the Zelda series. The game over screen is definitely one thing that, that the 2019 Link's Awakening remake does better than Echoes of Wisdom, even though it's not a huge flaw for me, but it's just a flaw I needed to bring up. One of the game's strongest areas has to do with the characters. While we already know who Zelda is, it is the first time that we've seen her in the Link's Awakening 2019 art style. So what new characters does this game have to offer? Starting off with Try, who does remind me of Star from Disney's Wish. No one come after me for that comparison. But Try does play a big part in not just the storytelling, but the world building as well. Try stands out to me because of how they are well developed and utilized they are. I just want to talk about one hidden detail about how Try is visually represented in the game. Because if you didn't notice through the game that Try has triangles representing the amount of power that Try has, more triangles get added to Try the more power that Try gets, and one disappears depending on how much power Try uses. I know that's a minor detail, but I thought I wanted to bring it up, and I don't really need to explain the King of Hyrule, Impa, Link, or Ganon because we already know who they are. So we're just gonna use this section to cover original characters. Minister Left, who acts as a guide for Princess Zelda early on in the game, but she does get turned into an evil echo, which causes the guards of Hyrule to put the blame on summoning the rifts on Princess Zelda. And General Wright, who does play a similar role to Minister Left. I don't really have that much to talk about him, because Left and Right aren't really developed that much. Blueberry, who is used as an NPC, where you can upgrade your sword fighter form for Link, such as the meter, the sword, bow and arrow, as well as the bombs. The business scrubs, who return from Ocarina of Time, 
serve as the NPCs who run smoothie shops, where you can combine ingredients that you find all around Hyrule, and with each ingredient having a different quality, such as the rock tatoes increasing your climbing speed, and radiant butter adding a glow effect for a temporary period of time. And there are multiple smoothie combinations to find in the game, and I found about 60 of them, through my entire run of Echoes of Wisdom. And one unnecessary area I would love to talk about, which is, is related to the world building, and that is the addition of two Zora tribes. One being the River Zora, which do take their designs from the classic Zelda games, and the Sea Zora, which take their designs from the modern Zelda games, like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. And finally, we have the main villain, no, I wouldn't say that Null is a special Zelda villain due to the lack of development since we don't see them until the end of the game. Since Null is responsible for creating evil echoes of people living across Hyrule. And the game doesn't offer a bad variety of characters even though Null doesn't live up to other Zelda villains like Ganondorf or Vati from the Minish Cap. Now, to end the review, we are going to talk about the story. Echoes of Wisdom takes a unique approach from past Zelda games and gives Princess Zelda the spotlight. Her journey begins after Link disappears into the still world. Upon returning to Hyrule, she is falsely accused of summoning the rifts by the imposters of her advisors. A fairy named Tri helps her, which causes Zelda and Tri to go on a mission across Hyrule to repair the rifts and rescue the ones trapped inside the still world. The story does a great job at putting Zelda into the spotlight and presenting a darker side of Hyrule, which is explored in previous games like Twilight Princess and Majora's Mask. Which, while I did enjoy the story, that doesn't mean that the story didn't have elements I didn't enjoy as much. A prime example of this was the Farren Wetlands section of the game. The reason this is the weakest section of the story for me is because that the Deku shrubs mistake the tri rod for a candy floss stick or cotton candy for you guys in America and you have to sneak your way out of the prison that you've been held in by the Deku shrubs to get your tri rod back. I get that stealth has always been a thing in Zelda games such as Ocarina of Time, where you have to sneak into Hyrule Castle to find the princess, but in the context of Echoes of Wisdom, not having access to the Tri-Rod takes away from the creative solutions to sneak past the Deku Shrubs. It worked at the beginning of the game because you had access to the Tri-Rod, but in the Farren Wetlands area, it just didn't work for me. And even with one weaker area in the story, I still think Echoes of Wisdom does succeed with delivering on its story with some memorable moments and wall building, which does add a bit of unique flair to Echoes of Wisdom compared to other installments. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom may not be the number one Zelda game of all time, but it holds up on it on its own as a fun and engaging game. The Echo system adds a unique twist to the gameplay, allowing players to creatively solve puzzles, and the visual style brought over from the 2019 Link's Awakening remake not only makes the visuals expansive, with amazing wall building and while not in certified gold with minor flaws to the game's design such as the echoes menu being a nightmare to navigate in comparison to tears of the kingdom 
the lifeless game over screen, and the Farron Wetlands part being the worst section in the story, The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom is still an acceptable instalment to The Legend of Zelda series, and that's why I give it the collector pack. And overall, I give The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom a 9 out of 10. While Echoes of Wisdom does have its drawbacks, it's still a, a worthy addition to the franchise. With clever puzzle design and great world building, it makes for a satisfying experience, even if the frame rate stumbles at times. The characters are more fleshed out than I, I even expected from a 2D Zelda game, and would I be interested to see more character-based Zelda spin-offs in the future? Answer? Yes. Because I would be interested to see Ganondorf and Impa get their own games in the future as well. And even if Echoes of Wisdom was the first character-based Zelda spin-off, ignoring the Philips CDI, I would be interested in seeing more character-based Zelda spin-offs in the future. So guys, what did you think of my review of The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom? So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another video like this one in the future. And I will see you all in a future video. BB-8 out. <laughs>